that's the magic of it, is to have to hide the initial source mm. and have like, all these these lines um, that don't seem related. On the other hand, uh, here's a snowball I made. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what we were going to start with is just a kind of general conversation about light, you know, and kind of different ways of thinking about it. Um, from there, we're going to get into material exploration. We're going to give each one of you a light bulb and a, and a socket and some materials. And just kind of, we'll do a kind of quick exploration and see what we can come up with. We'll have a conversation about that. So I think light is entering from here. But I mean, and light the is, light by the starts. way, light is clearly <laughs> entering in from here because you can, you can see yeah. through the bottom and you can see, you know, Yeah, but just through. look at, look at, like, look, look at this side as I pull this up. It gets yeah. brighter. It gets so, because it's, like it's collect, light is yeah. going through here right. coming out the sides. Right. Yes. Yeah. And like, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, that's yeah. it. Oh, ho, ho. I'd like their... I'd yeah, like, that's going to be super cool. Twist. All right. Well, I'd like to be able to position these in any orientation. Um, One thing that really excites me is how uh, luminescent the edges are. Yeah. Like, that just, that's like the coolest thing about this to me. Not so much... I mean, I, I like the, the reflection that comes off the sides here that, that makes it kind of like a prism. But for me, I wanted to do something with these edges. So then I got started on a second project, which was like, I wanted to take a bunch of little triangles, a lot of little cut up pieces of acrylic, and then like suspend them in some sort of resin so that I would have like just a, a cloud of little triangles of this material so that when you shine light through it, I would, I expected or I theorized, I would get a lot of these like luminescent edges, but like in all sorts of different places. And I wanted to know how would that scatter the light. The light shines darkly through it. Um, and then it's clouded in some areas and less in others. Like actual clouds in the sky would be. Do you want to think of like a high level application to this or, you know, like at the desk lab? Okay, and user? Well, yeah, I mean, because the whole point of this of this day has been to like not really worry about what we use it for, just to experiment. It seems. Do you think it would be good but to limit? Yeah. <coughs> well, just or one, one thing is good is yeah. it helps focus, but also right. limits. But so. here's here's how I feel. Everyone was making prototypes that kind of lent themselves to like everyone was implicitly talking about that look great on my desk. That would look great hanging from my ceiling. Mm -hmm. So and that would look great on a wall. So like, even though we were pretending like we weren't making it for a purpose, everyone like, had this secret like idea of like where it would fit, you know. I, I don't know whether we, what we want to do about that. Yeah, I mean Um so if you pull this up. So I made one playing with different types of wood, and I noticed when I first grabbed this that it had a crack in it. And just playing around with that, I love how it glows all around until you get to the crack, and it's this really, really bright just line of light across. Um, and it's a really organic shape because it was cracked like that. It's not straight. It's just. The is effect it, is, is like it the paper? Is it is it on paper backing? No. No, it's just the way it is. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then I wanted to play as well. With Kevin, do you have a good angle? All right. I'll just hold it. Oh. Patrick, do you want to hold the other help? One? I think the bottom needs more support than the center. I, don't know. I think I kind of want to see that. I think I yeah. I want to see it. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can get this to work. Oh nice. my god. 
This is it. The seam, seam is nice. So in engineers, typically, you know, viewing things through an engineer's eyes. And uh, they might have a, a reasonably broad vision, say, for if they're a good engineer. But uh, having them work alongside of other disciplines, make sure that things are well considered from all angles. How does someone interact with it? What environment does it exist in? How much power does it draw? What materials are, is it made of? You know, how long is it going to last? Um, what are we going to do with it when it breaks? And so I think there's a lot of different things that, you know, uh, that, that we need to have. There are a lot of different voices that need to exist in that conversation. And that art and design is, is a really fast, people more and more see it as a, something that should be added to the conversation. Yeah. I, I think, I think uh, you know, the, the, uh, I think to answer that question, I think one of the things that's most exciting to me about uh, you know, adding that to the conversation, as you say, is the methods that designers and artists use to solve the problems that they're interested in. And it's becoming more and more common for you know, economists, engineers, and scientists to kind of adopt these, these modes of thinking to explore problems uh, in different ways. And that's, that's what's exciting. Thank <laughs> you.